Hello everyone, my name is Sophia and I'm in grade 1. I hope everyone is reading Bible, staying safe and keeping social distancing. I miss all my teachers and friends. I pray we can meet at church soon. Today, Teacher Jesse will pray for us. Close your eyes and let us pray. Heavenly Father, although all the children and teachers still cannot get together in person to make worship, we know and we trust that you are our good, good Father. Please teach us to be your faithful people who always loves you and show your love to our family and neighbor. Dear God, we especially pray for Pastor Grace. Please give her extra strength and good health. And we pray for all the teachers and children are being healthy and safe. It is time to listen to your word through Pastor Grace. While listening, please open our ear to hear your voice. Open our mind and spirit to know your leading and guidance. And open our heart to receive your wonderful love. We always thank you for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Today's sermon is titled, Done a Beautiful Thing, and the passage is taken from Mark 14, 1 to 11. Mark 14, 1 to 11. Now the Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table of the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached, throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money, so he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Amen. Okay, now the Gospel of Mark was written by a man named John Mark. Mark worked with Paul and was really, really close with Peter. In fact, an early church historian believed that Mark gathered all the eyewitnesses, eyewitness testimonies of Peter and then wrote the Gospel of Mark based on what Peter said he saw and heard Jesus say and do. But Mark didn't just listen and then write. He didn't listen, write, listen, write. What he did was he collected all the information and then he carefully wrote this beautiful, beautiful narration of Jesus' life. See, if we compare the writing styles of Matthew and Mark, we find that in Matthew, Jesus writes stor- uh, Matthew writes stories about Jesus in a very formal and factual way. Like it's very, Jesus did this, Jesus did that, Jesus did this, Jesus did that, da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. But Mark's storytelling of Jesus is different. It's full of action. Mark focuses on all the marvelous things that Jesus did and the places that Jesus went. People say that the book of Mark is probably the first of the four Gospels to be written. And it's also the shortest of the four Gospels. Okay, so now with that background information, we dive into today's passage. It was only two days before the Passover. Do you guys know what the Passover festival was slash is? Yeah? Well, I know a lot of you do, but let me just remind some of you who forgot. It's a seven to eight day day Jewish holiday, and it's celebrated to remember the exodus of the children of Israel from Egyptian slavery. Remember when God passed over the houses of the Israelites during the last of the 10 plagues? Yep. So that's what the Passover festival was done, uh, why it was done. It was to remember that Passover. So in today's passage, it was only two days, two days before that Passover celebration and the leaders and leaders like priests and teachers of the law were planning to kill Jesus to secretly kill Jesus but they knew if they took Jesus and they killed him during the Passover festival it would make a lot of people angry and it would also make them look really bad so they were like okay we're gonna kill Jesus but let's wait let's wait until this Passover festival is over now, when Jesus now, <laughs> Jesus was at the home of Simon the leper. Leprosy was a skin disease, and people back in the biblical times thought that people with this disease were very, very, very dirty. In fact, they were considered so dirty and unclean that they weren't allowed to be with other people who didn't have this disease. 
But what did our Jesus do? What did our Jesus do, guys? He went to the house of Simon the leper. And when Jesus was at Simon's house, when Jesus was just sort of leaning against a table, this woman, this woman came into Simon's house with a jar of very, very, very expensive perfume made from pure, pure oils and poured it on Jesus' head. People in the room were like, oh my word, why would she do that? That's so wasteful. That's like worth a year's salary. I mean, she could have sold that perfume and helped so many poor people. But instead, what does she do? She pours it all on Jesus' head. What's she thinking? Like she could have just poured a little. What is she thinking? But what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say? Does Jesus say the same thing? Does he go, woman, I get it. I get it. But don't waste this on me. Stop it. We're going to sell this and we're going to help more people. No, Jesus doesn't say that. What does he say? What does he say to all those people? He says, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. And he continues. He says that there will, there will always be poor people, but he wouldn't always be there with them. Jesus knew what was happening. He knew that the leaders were plotting to kill him. He knew that he was going to die soon. And this woman, this woman comes and pours this perfume on Jesus. Now Mark, Mark doesn't give us her name. In the Gospel of John, John says that this woman was Mary. You know, Mary, the sister of Lazarus, the one that Jesus rose from the dead. Okay, but let's forget about John's version for a while and just focus on Mark's point of view. Let's listen to what Mark was saying. We don't know who this woman is, but she receives the greatest, greatest compliment that any human being could receive from Jesus Christ. Do you know what Jesus says to her? What he says about her? He says, Truly, I tell you, wherever, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. You see what Jesus was saying. Every time, every time somebody talks about me, they will remember her too. They will remember her because of what she has done to me. People will remember her love for me. People will remember her because she sees me and she knows who I am. You see, Jesus knew he was going to die and his followers, his disciples knew that Jesus was the Messiah, but they, they didn't want him to die. But this woman, this woman knew exactly who Jesus was and exactly what he had to do and why he had to do it. She knew that only Jesus, only Jesus could save us all. And she knew that the only way he could do it was to die for our sins. Words weren't enough to express what she felt. So she ran to Jesus. She ran to Jesus with the most expensive perfume. It was probably perfume she was saving for her wedding day. And what she did, she broke the jaw and she she started to pour it on Jesus' head. Did Jesus say she was doing this beautiful thing because the perfume was expensive? No. Jesus said this because she knew, she knew who Jesus was and what he would do for her. And her words were not enough to express what she felt. So she got the most expensive things, the most valuable things she could find. And she ran to Jesus and she didn't gently pour it on his head. What she did, she broke it. She broke the jar. She didn't know what to do. And she just started pouring it. She started pouring it on Jesus' head. And even that wasn't enough to express what she felt. Guys, you see, back then, women and children were nobodies. My lovelies, you and I, if we were born in biblical times, nobody would have noticed us. Nobody would have cared for us. But what did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? He came to outcasts like me, the unimportant people, and he ate with them. I picture this woman to be like, guys, do you know who this person is? Do you know who he is? If you did, you wouldn't just sit here. You wouldn't just be sitting here. But she knew nothing would be enough for Jesus. Nothing she could do would be enough for Jesus. And yet she had to do something. She had to do something for the Savior, for the King, for the Messiah. And what did Jesus do? Jesus told a nobody like her that this 
was the most beautiful thing anybody, anybody could ever do for him. My lovelies, what can we do for Jesus? How can we love Jesus so that we receive the most beautiful compliment ever? So that Jesus looks at us and he says, my child, you have done a beautiful thing for me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our Lord, our Savior, thank you. Thank you for being our Lord and Savior. Only you are our Lord and Savior. Father God, we want to do a beautiful thing for you. Nothing we do is ever worth anything, actually. <laughs> but Father God, you take us. You take us all for what we are. You take our sin and you erase it. Father God, thank you. Thank you for being our Savior. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, guys, so this week we are folding a jar. <laughs> We're folding a jar. And on the jar, we are going to write, leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. So I want you to, don't forget to write the message. I'm so happy that you guys fold, but it's the message that matters. Okay, so do this, take a picture and Send it in. I can't wait to see how, how you guys design yours. Have a good week, guys.